This video is brought to you by G2A. Never pay full price for a game ever again. G2A offers the best prices for any game out there for practically any platform. Click on the link below to see for yourself. What's happening guys, it's Ed back again from TechSaurus and welcome to the August PC build. This is Exion, the 4500 Ultimate Gaming PC. This is part 1 of 2 where I go through the parts I selected and the reasoning behind them and then part 2 will be the gaming benchmarks and performance test. By the way, all the parts I mentioned in this video will be linked down below in the description section. But with that said, let's go ahead and check out the specs. So I went with an Intel i7-5820K processor, an MSI X99S Gaming 9 motherboard, 3 GTX 980 Ti's, 16GB of G-Skill RipJaws DDR4 memory, an AX1200i power supply with two 512GB SSDs which will be set up in RAID 0 and lastly a Lipa Aqua Changer 120 CPU cooler. Some other miscellaneous items I picked up are static and airflow fans from Corsair, some red threaded SATA cables and magnetic LED strips from BitPhoenix, and a custom threaded cable set from the guys at Performance PCs. All of these awesome parts will be packed inside the magnificent Colossus case from BitPhoenix. As soon as I laid my eyes on it, I knew that this was the case for my build. It's an ATX full tower chassis that features two USB 3.0 and USB 2.0 ports along with a built-in fan and LED controllers. One of the main reasons why I chose this case was because of the Bitphoenix S3 which is a storage compartment and a security system in one place. I now have a dedicated place for my external hard drive but it can also store your phone or other valuable items as well and you can lock it up with the included key. There's even a dedicated place to route the cables through which really cleans up the entire case. And since you can lock the top compartment, you can practically lock down your keyboard, mouse, and USB drives, and no one can take them without the key. No USB ports or buttons sticking out of the case combined with the awesome LEDs makes this case an obvious choice for me. In fact, this is the case I'm going to be using for my ultimate water cooling build that's going to be happening early 2016. For the motherboard, I decided to take a break from ASUS and go with an MSI Gaming 9 X99 board. If it isn't obvious by now, I decided to stick with my trademark colors, the popular red and black theme, which I'm sure most of you guys are already sick of seeing on my channel. The X99S model supports 8 RAM slots of 128GB of DDR4 memory, up to speeds of 3333MHz on a quad channel. It also supports Intel i7 processors and features 5 PCI 3.0 slots that can support up to 4-way SLI and also features 10 SATA ports and a single M.2 port. It also has a total of 10 USB ports. Now, some of the awesome features on the Gaming 9 board that makes it an awesome choice for gaming are as follows. Killer Double Shot Pro that ensures you won't get kicked from an online game because of high ping. Streaming Engine which enables you to capture high frame rate video in real time gaming without sacrificing your CPU or GPU performance. It also features Sound Blaster Cinema 2. You can clearly hear specific sounds in gaming environments which means that you can hear the enemies perfectly. You also get amazing surround sound just by using stereo headphones or speakers. Turbo M.2 is also another feature and you get speeds up to 32GB per second through PCI Express for the latest generation SSDs. And lastly, my two favorite features, OC Genie 4 that will give your PC an adrenaline shot, delivering up to 20% performance, and the gaming app that will give you control on overclocking your CPU and GPU all with a touch of a button. Those are just some of the awesome features that the MSI Gaming 9 motherboard comes with and the fact that it in black and red made this a simple choice for me. For the CPU, I went with the 5820K and I'm sure a lot of you guys might be asking why I didn't go with the 5930K for a few hundred bucks more or even the 5960X for about three times the price. The simple and short answer is price per performance. Since most games don't even support over six cores, it would have been a waste going with the eight core 5960X. Now I know that the 5930K has 40 lanes which will give me a 16-16-8 configuration with a three-way SLI as opposed to the 5820K's 16, 8, and 4. But the performance difference is very marginal and it's not enough to justify spending a few hundred more for the 5930K. Now if I was going for a productivity type setup and I wanted to connect two or more 4K monitors, then the 5930K would have been the ideal selection. But since this is strictly a gaming PC, the 5820 made more sense. Instead of going with a single GPU or the common two-way SLI, I decided to try something new and go with three GeForce GTX 980 Ti's from MSI as well to keep the black and red theme consistent. 
The MSI Edition 980 Ti has a core clock of 1000MHz, 6GB of GDDR5 memory with a 384-bit interface and uses 250 watts of power for each card. It also has a single HDMI port, 3 display ports and a single DVI. It also features Twin Frozer which generates 19% more airflow without increasing drag for supreme silent performance and in some cases eliminates the fan noise completely by stopping the fans when they are not needed. One of the reasons why it took me so long to post this video is because I've been waiting for ASUS to send me their Enthusiast Edition SLI bridge, which even till today, I still haven't received it. It's actually still on back order. The SLI bridge comes in two, three, and even four-way configurations, and it looks badass, but I'll go ahead and drop a link to that down below on where you guys can get them for a great price. I should have it by the time the PC is built and part 2 is uploaded though. Since this is an x99 build, I had to go with DDR4 RAM. I went with the fastest memory I can find for 3000 MHz. Turns out G-Skill was the obvious choice, which isn't surprising since they do make some of the best RAM sticks out there for gaming. Oh, and they look pretty badass too. For cooling, I went with the Lipa Aqua Changer 120mm. Unfortunately, the case doesn't support 240mm radiators, which is why I couldn't go with the Corsair H100i GTX. So the next best option was the Aqua Changer. With speeds between 500 and 2300 RPM and super quiet fan speeds, this will provide enough cooling for when I overclock the CPU. For storage, I went with two 512GB Samsung 850 Pro SSDs that I will be hooking up together with RAID 0 for super fast boot up and loading times. To power up all these bad boys, I went with the Corsair AX1200i power supply. It's a fully modular PSU and it packs enough power for 3-way SLI and more, allowing the build to be practically future-proof. I did purchase some additional accessories that will definitely make the PC stand out a bit more. Instead of going with the standard pin connector cables from Corsair, I decided to pick up some awesome custom threaded cables from Cable Mod. By the way, huge thanks to Performance PCs for sending this out to me and I'll go ahead and leave a link to their website if you guys want to pick some awesome cables up for your PC. And they also have a bunch of other PC parts for modding as well, so definitely check them out. I also picked up some magnetic white LED strips from BitPhoenix, which will definitely make the components inside stand out. Also from BitPhoenix are two of these threaded red SATA cables to go with my SSDs. Additionally, I picked up some pretty sweet gaming gear that will go really well with the PC. A Corsair K70 RGB keyboard along with the M60 RGB gaming mouse. I also picked up the Sennheiser Game 1 headset. Some additional gear include a pretty sweet headphone hanger and a sick extended gaming mat from Xco. Without a doubt, this is going to be a pretty sweet setup once it's completed and Big Red will officially be no more. If you guys are excited to see part 2, let me know by hitting that like button. So that's all the parts I'm going to be using for the build. Uh, once again, I'll be leaving links down below for anyone that's interested. Um, I actually picked most of the parts up from BH Photo and believe it or not they actually do sell PC parts and they have really great deals on them so if you guys are building your next PC definitely check their website before you go anywhere else because chances are you'll find them a lot cheaper there. Anyways that's it for the video thank you guys for watching let me know what you guys think about the parts uh, by leaving a comment down below and as always if you guys want me to continue doing these PC builds every month let me know by leaving a like on the video. And if you guys want to help support the channel so I can do these builds more often, uh, you guys can bookmark one of the Amazon links down below. That way I get a small kickback every time you guys shop. It's completely free for you and it really does help support the channel and I can do these builds more frequently. I'm actually thinking about doing these twice a month, but it depends on how well the support is. Anyways, thanks for watching. Make sure you guys stick around for part two where I do gaming benchmarks as well as other benchmark tests on the PC coming really soon. Uh, this is Ed from TechSource. I'll see you guys in the next video.